All right then, welcome back. So I got my cup of coffee, I think I'm ready to go. So I left y'all with the number line, okay? And I kind of condensed it a little bit and just added the, the metric prefixes. So what this section is, is conversion between different metric values or metric conversions themselves. So what I did is I put a couple problems up here on the board. 8.6 microamps equals how many milliamps? So how many ohms are in kilo ohms? So this is what we're doing. And I can tell you, it really just boils down to moving the decimal point. So what we have to realize is we consider this the question and that the answer. So I see a decimal point in this value. And what I have to realize is that decimal point is actually sitting on the number line on the micro spot. Okay. So that means that this decimal point is sitting right here on my number line. Now I need to convert it over to milliamps. So that means I'm going to have to move the decimal point to the milliamp section or to the milliamp position. So I'm going to take and move that decimal point. Now to get over here to the milli point, I have to move that decimal point one, two, three places to the left, three places to the left. So if I take this value of 8.6 and I move it three places to the left, that would be one, two, three places to the left. I'm going to move that decimal point over there. And what do I do with those blank spots? That's right. I add zeros. So my value, my answer would be 0 0.0086 microamps so, or milliamps. So in 8.6 microamps is only 0 0.0086 milliamps. So now, here we're going to convert 4,600 ohms to kilo ohms. There's no decimal point in that number. Well, you know, every number that doesn't have a decimal point, we automatically assume that the decimal point is at the very end of the number. And so we automatically assume that that decimal point is right there. Now, that decimal point is sitting on our number line on the regular ohm spot. So this being the volt amp ohm watt, that decimal point is sitting right there on that number line. Now, it's telling me I need to move that decimal point to the kilo spot. So I'm gonna take this decimal point and I look up here from the regular ohm spot to get it over to the kilo spot. I need to move it one, two, three places to the left. So I'm gonna take this decimal point and I'm gonna move it three places to the left. So that's one, two, three places to the left. So my answer becomes 4.6 kilo ohms. Now, how about them zeros? Can I put those zeros? Yes, I can put those zeros, but they really don't count for anything. So I don't see the point. I Me, mean, basically, if, if I don't have to do something typically, I'm not going to. So, um, yeah, if I don't have to put those zeros, I'm not going to. But don't let that confuse you. 4.600 is the same quantity as simply 4.6. So 4.6 kilo ohms and 4.6 kilo, 4.600 kilo ohms, same value. Don't worry about it. Okay. So now 36 milliamps, 36 milliamps. Again, I got one that doesn't have a decimal point. So what am I going to do? I know it's right here behind the six and it's sitting on the number line on the milli spot. So that means that that decimal point is sitting right here on the milli spot. So I need to move it to the regular amp spot. So from the milli spot to the regular amp spot, it's one, two, three places to the left. So if I move this one, two, three places to the left, I got that space again. What am I going to do? Of course, I'm going to fill it in with a zero. And so I fill in that zero. So it becomes 0 0.036 million or amps. So 36 milliamps is only 0 0.036 amps. And in this last one, we got 160 kilo ohms or 160 kilovolts, 160 kV. We know that the decimal point, Again, it falls at the end of the value if there's not one. So I'm going from KV to V. So that means that decimal point is sitting on my number line on the K spot. So that decimal point sitting right there on the K spot. And I got to move it to the regular V spot. So I'm going to move it over here to the regular V spot from the K spot to the V spot. I go one, two, three places to the right. So now there's 160, three places to the right. One, two, three. What do I do with those three blanks? That's exactly right. I fill them in with zeros. So 160 KV is... 160,000 volts because kilo is a thousand. So 160 kilovolts, 160,000 volts, same difference. Okay. So <clears throat> these metric conversions are using the number line. You got to memorize the number line. And I say that, and uh, you know, you're going to be taking your quiz sitting there at the house and all this stuff. And you're going to be tempted to look at that number line and uh, you probably will, but that's okay for the quiz. But you get back here in this classroom and you don't know this number line, you don't have a problem. I'm serious. You go on, because I know what's coming up in this course, folks. And if you skip on any of the little tidbits along the way, you are not going to understand the stuff it, it, that comes at the end of this course. So make sure that you consume this. Know the number line. Be able to convert from one metric value to the next. It's moving the decimal point, okay? So it's not that bad. Moving the decimal point. So the next thing we need to talk about is the calculator. Now, the calculator is what we're going to be doing all of our testing with. Uh, it's going to give us the analysis on a lot of these circuit problems. And so it's the basis of everything else to come, really. You understand the concepts, but then we use the math part to prove the concepts and, and so on and so forth. So if you don't know the math, or how to use a calculator, uh, you're pretty much screwed. So bottom line, learn the number line, learn your metric prefixes, okay? So your worksheet will have 10 of these problems. So you'll do practice up on 10 of them and send that back to me. The calculator. This is the TI-36X or the 30X. So this is the one that I teach off of. If you don't have one like this, um, Good luck for the time being. But so this calculator. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be actually taking and performing equations similar to this.
3.9 microamps times 26.3 kilo ohms. Well, the first thing that you got to know, folks, and at the very least, consume this first. These are the four right in the center that, that surround the volt amp spot, the, the, the base spot. So learning these exponents along with these prefixes is going to be key. So for the mega, we know it's exponent six. For kilo, it's exponent three. For milli, it's exponent negative three. And for micro, it's exponent negative six. We have to consume this. Because I can tell you, there is not a kilo key or a micro key or any other kind of key on this calculator. So how in the world am I going to enter in the metric prefixes of micro? Well, I'm not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize what the uh, exponent is for that metric prefix, and I'm going to enter the exponent. So I recognize the metric prefix and the exponent that goes with it, and the calculator understands the exponent. We never write down exponents. We never read exponents. We always read and write metric prefixes, but the calculator doesn't understand metric prefixes. That's why we have to know the exponents that go with them, because we're going to enter the exponents into the calculator, okay? So now, first of all, you know, I, I can take and perform an equation, and I can come up with an answer that's 3.9615432 uh, milliamps, let's say, okay? Now, do I need that much precision? No, no, because what we're going to find out is there ain't nothing a man makes is perfect including electronic components. There's a little bit of error built into them in the first place. And then you start building uh, measuring devices with these same components that have error in them, and you got error multiplied over. And so having this much precision with components that have error is useless. So we don't need that much precision. But what we do need is we do need at least three decimal places behind that decimal point, okay? So we need three decimal places behind that decimal point. Now, wouldn't it be nice if the calculator would automatically do that for us? Well, it does. And see, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to fix our decimal place for three places, okay? So if I look at the calculator... Now look at the decimal point key. I can see the word fix written in green above it. Now notice there's this green fix key, or this green second key. Written above the key is what they call the second function. So to access that second function, I have to hit that green second key first. So if I want to fix my decimal place three places, I'm going to hit my second, I'm going to hit my fix, and then I'm going to hit my three key. Now notice I've got three zeros behind the, the decimal point now. Okay? I want to do this every time I use this calculator. I want to make sure that I hit the, the second, the decimal point, and and then the number three key. This puts the calculator set to round three places. The next thing I want to do is I, I don't want to get these answers with all these zeros in and stuff. I sure wish the calculator would automatically convert these into the correct metric. Wow, it does. It actually does. But I have to put it in the mode. So remember, there's scientific um, exponential notation and engineering notation. If I look above the five key, I'll see the SCI. That's not what I want. Above the six key is the engineering. So I want to put it in the engineering mode. So I come up here and hit the second key and then hit the engineering. And notice I get my little zeros behind the uh, number for my exponents. That's where my exponents are going to go. All right, so to put it in the engineering mode, I hit the second key and simply the number six key. So this is what I need to do to my calculator every time I pull it out and start using it in this course. I need to have it round in three places, and I need it in the engineering mode. You need to put it in the engineering mode, set around three places, okay? So that's second decimal point, three, second, six. That gets it in the engineering mode. Now, this value, 3.9 micro, well... Uh-huh. Where'd he go? He went that way and now he come back when I said TV magic. All right, so what we're going to have to do is we have to enter these values. Like I said, first thing i got to know is that exponent for kilo is 3, and the exponent for micro is negative 6. So in order to enter that, I'm going to enter in, okay, I'm going to enter in 3.9. And you see this EE key above the number 7 key? That EE key stands for enter exponent, enter exponent. So I got the 3.9, so I'm going to enter my exponent. Little zeros pop up. And uh, micro is negative 6, so I'm going to hit the little negative button down here along with the 6 key. Notice now my exponent says negative 6, so I got 3.9 exponent negative 6. And then it is times, so I'm going to hit the times. And then it's 26.3 kilo ohms, so I enter in 26.3. And I got to enter in the kilo ohms, the exponent 3 for kilo. So I come up here and hit the EE key, hit the 3 key. Now I got 26.3 exponent 3, and I hit equal and boom, I get a value and it says 102.570 and it has an exponent negative 3. I will not write that exponent negative 3. My value that I would write as my answer, since negative 3 stands for milli, would be 102.57. Now remember, I won't put the zeros if I don't have to. Alright, now the units at this point really don't mean anything because we're not solving for anything. We're really just learning to use the calculator. So what did I do? I entered in 3.9 and then I hit my E key, enter my exponent, and then I hit my change sign key. That's how I want to make it negative. Then I entered in the 6 because micro is negative 6. Then I said times. Then I entered in the 26.3. Now that's kilo. So I had to enter my exponent. And kilo is exponent 3. And then I hit the equals key. So to enter that equation in, it was 3.9, enter exponent negative 6 for micro, times 26.3, exponent 3, equals.
All right, so this is how we're going to use the calculator. You've got to get to know this enter exponent. Watch this section a couple of times if you need to, all right? So the calculator isn't that bad. It's pretty much, you know, feels natural, but enter exponent, E, E, key, all right? Got to have it in the correct mode. Set it to round three places, put it in the engineering mode. Make sure that you know your exponents and metric prefixes, at least the ones in the center for now. I'm not saying we're never going to go into the gigaterra uh, nano pico area, but these are the ones we use most, okay? And so to enter this equation, again, 3.9 EE, negative 6 for my micro times, 26.3, enter exponent 3 for kilo, all right? Now, so y'all are going to get a worksheet. The worksheet will be coming out. Uh, it may very well already be there. So uh, worksheet is probably going to come out with the assignment. Make sure that you work the problems on the worksheet. You turn around and send the worksheet back, and then... Next week, we're going to have the quiz on this, okay? So last week, we did the whole intro in atomic theory. Today, we had the quiz. Today, we're getting the calculator, and next week, we'll have the quiz on it, all right? So if you have any questions on this stuff, be sure uh, to email me. Email is definitely the best way to get in touch with me. I sit around that darn computer every day, all day long, and I'm ready to get back in the classroom. I hate computers. I just thought I'd share that. I know I work on them and the world and all that, but I hate them suckers because they're going to leave you stranded the first chance they get. Technology ain't all that that it's cracked up to be. So anyway, that's just my thought. I do better with people. Can't wait to get y'all back in the classroom. On that note, we'll call it a day, and uh, y'all have a good week, folks. Let me know if you need some. All right. Uh -huh.